Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to do a review of Aces of Valor from Legion Wargames and designed by Eric von Rossing. Now in this game you take charge of either a French, British, American or German squadron in World War I and lead them over a series of 8, 12 or 16 missions in a campaign. Now it's a solitaire game where it's you against the AI trying to do the best you can for your squadron. Let's jump in and get started with our power review. Right out of the gate, I just want to say I like this game a lot. This game is very addictive to play, more so than almost any other board game I've played. It has a just one more mission feel to it, and I'll talk more about that in the extended review. But it's addictive, it's fun, it generates great narrative. I've really enjoyed playing this. I also appreciate that it's a, a easy game to, it's a relatively straightforward game to execute. I won't say easy, but a relatively straightforward game to execute with a good rule set and it is super fast to set up. So literally five minutes you can be in. For that reason, I think this game has a lot of attractiveness because it's gonna be a very easy game to get to the table. I feel like if you get this game and like this game, it's gonna be a game that you end up playing a lot. On a more neutral note, it's very important to know that this isn't a simulation of World War I combat. Both the nationalities, the aircraft, and then the combat itself are streamlined. So there's not much differences really between French, German, British, American aircraft in terms of performance and what it's like flying for the squadrons. There's some, but it's very, very light. Combat is very streamlined, so you're not going into a lot of detail for air combat. It's got a very elegant system, but that's not this type of game. So if you're looking for a detailed simulation of how different aircraft performed in World War I and what it might be differences between flying for a French squadron or a British squadron, that's really not your, this game for you. This is really about the narratives and the missions and the stories that happen as you're flying your planes. Now a big question that gets asked of this subgenre of games where you're leading like a squadron or a submarine or a tank over a campaign of missions in a solitaire format is how much agency do the player have? And by that we mean how many, how many meaningful and impactful decisions and fun decisions are you making as the player that's going to impact the outcome of the game? On that scale, this game is very light in that regard. I think it's probably the lightest game I've played in this category of games. And there's times where I felt myself wishing I had more impact on the outcome of what was happening. Now, I'll expand on that in the extended review, but I think it's important to note that this is not the type of game you want to get if you're looking to think really hard in playing a war game. Let's jump into our extended review where I kind of ramble on and talk to a little bit more depth about some of the talk, the kind of talking points that were in that kind of power review at the beginning. Um, first up, let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. Okay, it, it's really addictive. And I, when I first started playing this game, it was like nine o'clock at night and I played through one mission, it was like 9.30 or something like that. Or maybe the first one took a little bit longer. I don't recall, I kind of lost track of time as you'll kind of get from this story. And I finished and I'm like, I kind of want to play one more mission. And then I played like one more mission, it was like after 10 or something, like I probably should like do something else, but I kind of want to play one more mission. And that kept going on, lather, rinse, repeat, until all of a sudden it was like midnight and I played like six missions in the campaign. I'm like, wow, that was really fun. So this game has that one more mission feel to it and I know why. If you've taken psychology 101 in college or something like that, you will know about reinforcement theory and you will know that one of the strongest predictors of kind of persistent behavior. If you're trying to get someone to keep doing something, you've got random intermittent rewards. And that's this game to a nutshell. Okay, first of all, this game is kind of brutal. I mean, it's going to, especially if you start with one of like the lower tier squadrons, like the tier one squadrons, it's just going to slam you down. Like in my very first mission, in my very first campaign, I had the America, I took Americans, and I had the 2.2, Eddie Rickenbauer, Rickenbauer, the number one US ace, right? In the very first mission, the very first encounter, we got jumped by the Red Baron and he got shot down and crashed and died. So now all we had was like seven really beginner pilots. So you're going to have missions that just go sideways and you're gonna feel like you're doing terrible at times because it's hard, it's, there is no mercy in this game sometimes. Your planes are gonna get hit by anti-aircraft fire, they're gonna crash and they're gonna die, you're gonna lose pilots and things like that. But here's the thing, the campaign is gentle. So even though individual missions might be somewhat brutal 
and you're going to have a lot of failures. The campaign and the overall success of the campaign track has that kind of expectation built into it. So in my first campaign, I found out like after five missions, I had like three victory points, or maybe it was a little bit more because we had one good mission. I, I think it was I had one good mission. And I'm thinking like, wow, I'm doing terrible. And I realized, no, I'm actually not doing badly. Now we ended up in that first campaign with a minor defeat which means that we had like three successful missions out of seven. One we had to cancel because everybody was shot down. I had to kind of rebuild my whole squadron and stuff like that. But the game has ways that's gonna keep you alive. And even though we were getting beaten down, we had only lost two pilots. So it's got this kind of level of brutality that you can experience at those kind of ground level mission level. And yet, even as you get through, you're like, well, that wasn't bad, considering we had a beginning level squadron and the only pilot with skill that we had got shot down in the very first mission, we still ended up with kind of a minor defeat in our very first campaign. So I was like, yeah, that's kind of, it was fun. You know, we had like enough successes that it was pretty good. But that's kind of what this game is. It's random inter intermittent rewards because you're gonna have two missions that go completely sideways and you're gonna think, ah, we're doing so poorly. And then the next mission, you're gonna go bomb an airfield and get a ton of points and you're gonna be like, yeah, we got this, right? So you get like two bad ones, a good one. Then you get three bad ones and two good ones. It's random, it's intermittent, and it's gonna make you just wanna go to the next mission. So it's behavior theory, reinforcement theory, to the max is just inherent in this game. And that's what creates that, I just want to play one more mission. You're kind of, I want to pull the slot and see what happens kind of thing. And the missions are fun. That's the other part about this game that I really enjoy. The mission variety is really cool. There's enough there, you know, busting balloons or aerial reconnaissance or bombing bases or dogfighting or an enemy squadron shows up or challenges. And especially if you use the post-mission events, which are kind of, you pull one of these cards, you get some really kind of cool and random things happening to your squadron then as well and you get these pilots that develop stories and they're going to get shot down and they shoot down other planes they get hit by anti-aircraft and your best pilot gets die you know just dies and crashes so stuff's going to go sideways you're going to have aces and heroes arise you're going to have a pilot that does really well and it's just really really good at generating narrative and that sense of reward and failure and how at the mission level it's hard and the campaign level it's somewhat gentle, it's just a brilliantly fun experience to have in playing through a campaign with this game. So I really enjoy the gameplay in that regard. It is a lot of fun. They've done a ton of stuff really, really well with this game. Let's talk a little bit, shifting gears a little bit, let's talk to about the rule play, uh, the rule book as well. Um, rule book is really, really good. I had, I think, maybe three or four things that I wasn't quite sure of that I, it was like I kind of guessed what I should do, but I just wanted to clarify them. I posted on Board Game Geek, and I think it's the developer that's there. I'm not quite sure of his role to the game, but he's connected to it in some way. Uh, he replied really fast, really clear, so he's been very, very active on the Board Game Geek forums, providing answers. But there's really not that many that you can't figure out from the rules. It's a very clear, well-executed rule set. You know, it's, it's really well done. So I found like that that's really nice too, because it's really nice to be able to pick up a game, process the rules, jump right in, and get into the gameplay. And I mentioned this in the short review too as well. The other thing that's really nice about this game is that it's very fast to set up and play. You really put down some kind of some turn markers, some victory point markers, you pick some kind of determine your starting squadron, determine the length, pick out eight planes, set them up, draw a mission card, and you go. Five minutes, you're off and running. So once you know how to play, you can just jump into a campaign really, really fast. And I think with the way that gameplay is streamlined in this game, I think easily you can play that eight mission short campaign in probably three to four hours. And I would suspect even if you get really fast at it, it's probably gonna be faster, maybe even closer to two hours. You know, some of the missions are short and some of them are longer, you know, you, you, again, it's that random intermittent reward. You're gonna go on some mission, you're not gonna get hit by anti-aircraft, you're not gonna see any, any, any you're, gonna, you're not gonna see any enemy planes, you're gonna get to your target, you're gonna bomb it, you're gonna make it all the way home and you're gonna be like, that was a piece of cake. Then you're gonna have your next mission, you're gonna get jumped by enemy planes three times, they're gonna have the advantage, they're gonna rip apart your planes, you got two planes shot down early on, do you continue on or do you give up your mission, do you go back? And you're gonna be like, well, okay, that one went completely sideways. And stuff just happens in this game with that regard. Which is really, I think, you know, thinking about it too, and kind of that br brutality of this air combat in World War One, it it doesn't feel it feels realistic, right? You're just there are going to be days where you just get jumped by an enemy squadron. There's going to be days where your plane just gets hit by anti-aircraft fire. It's like you can't do anything about it, and they crash and they die, and you're like, well, 
We get hit by anti-aircraft fire and we crashed and we died. So stuff just happens in this game and it feels like it's not a, it's a game that doesn't pull its punches in terms of that kind of combat level and the reality and brutality of World War I aerial combat. But it is going to be, because it's a game that sets up really fast and it's really fun to play and it's easy to play, I think this is the type of game that if you buy it, you know, there's games you buy and they sit on your shelves and you're like, oh, okay. You gotta kind of be mentally up and have the time and like, oh, it's going to take a long time to set up. This is a game you're going to pull it out and you can be playing in five minutes. So, you know, that type of accessibility in a game is really appreciated because, you know, we're all short on time. It's really nice to be able to pick up a game, boom, and you're in and playing five minutes later and you get your campaign and you're off and running. And yeah, I think as you get fast at executing the missions, even some of those longer ones where you're going to get jumped three times by a squadron, it's going to might take you half an hour to do a mission. You're going to have others that are like 10 minutes and going to be really fast. So playing a full eight mission campaign, that short campaign in three to four hours feels pretty reasonable to me. And then, you, you know, the full campaign is 16 uh, missions. And I feel like that too could be done in an evening or two. So, you know, it's got a nice streamlined feel to it and the level of detail for what you're trying to do and to play this kind of campaign arc for your squadron feels like they've got a nice sweet spot with that level of detail. And... Speaking of that level of detail, that is kind of a neutral point, I think, to make on this game. I don't think it's a positive. I, well, let me say this. I found myself wishing for more variety between the different nations and the aircraft. Um, and, and sometimes, yeah, in that regard. And, and kind of even to a little degree, maybe a little bit more subtlety to the combat. But I realized they, why they've done what they've done in order to kind of streamline the combat system and make it work and make it to be fun and enjoyable. So this is definitely a game that has emphasized you know, keeping those stories coming out, keeping the narrative going, keeping your campaign moving along so it doesn't get bogged, kind of bogged down at any one particular place. And to do that, they really had to kind of make the aircraft uh, generic and make the nationalities, you know, largely generic. There's some nuances there, especially if you add in some optional rules, but by and large, if you're starting with the French squadron or starting with the British squadron or starting with an American squadron, the only thing that really is different is the counters and the names of the pilots. Everything else is kind of the same. The aircraft are going to perform the same, even though they might be named different things. And likewise, starting out with the German Tier 1 aircraft, it's the same thing as the French, the American, and the British Tier 1 aircraft. There's no distinction for performance on those craft. And so it, it, the game is designed very simplified air performance, combat performance, and some of the nuances that you might see between the nationalities and the types of aircraft they had. So that, that's something I think to be aware of. I wouldn't consider that a negative to the game. Yeah, sure, it would be nice to have all these other pieces and have that too, absolutely. That would be really, really cool. But you'd probably be talking more complexity. The game's gonna get mired down in some places. And I think that's a good design decision for what they're trying to hit, that sweet spot they're trying to hit for this game. But you do wanna be aware of that. If you're looking for a detailed simulation of World War I aerial combat and to see how different aircraft performed for different nations in different ways and stuff like that, this isn't the game for you because this game does not do that. This game streamlines and kind of abstracts quite a bit of the combat there to make the game keep flowing and make things work from that narrative perspective. I want to spend some time talking about agency because that's the question that gets asked a lot of this subgenre of games. And you know, the, by, by subgenre, I mean these kind of solitaire games where you're leading a squadron, a plane, a tank, a submarine over a series of missions in a campaign arc. You know, there's a good number of war games that have come out in the past few years that are in this subgenre, solitaire games that you're doing that. And one of the questions that gets asked about those games is how much agency does the player have? And by agency, we mean, do you as the player have a good number of meaningful and impactful decisions. So you feel like you're influencing gameplay. It's your decisions that are driving gameplay. Or in a light agency game, the gameplay is often described as being on rails and things kind of happen. And the player, as you are kind of executing the system, but you're largely on along for the ride. And so I want to talk about that with this game. I do feel like in this game, Aces of Valor, it's a very light agency game. I don't feel like there are, I mean, there are decisions. It's not like there's no agency, but compared to other games I've played in this subgenre, I feel like this is the lightest one I've experienced. And I was listening to, I was reading a, a conversation on Twitter about that where one player was saying they feel like it has as much agency as Silent Victory or The Hunters. 
And I actually respectfully disagree there. I feel like there is more meaningful decisions in that game than in this game. There are stretches here where I felt like gameplay just happens and you go 15 minutes, you're like, I really haven't decided anything, you know? Um, and yes, you, there, there are four places in this game really, and maybe a couple more minor ones, but there's really four places in this game where you have decisions. Um, that grand level campaign level, when you come back from a mission with a number of mission points, you're converting those into victory points. And that is a meaningful and fun decision matrix that you're kind of exploring. Do you upgrade your planes? Do you um, repair planes? Do you convert your mission points to victory points? And how are you going to make that work so that you have a good campaign arc and can have a successful campaign? I like that level of decision making and I feel like that's very well executed. And I feel like as a player, I have some meaningful impact on the arc of the campaign at that level, for sure. So there's definitely agency there. The second level is pre-mission when you're picking your pilots to go out on the mission. Who are you going to select and who are you going to leave behind? Um, I feel like, yeah, there, there is, there's some agency there, but to a certain degree it feels like your best advantage in most missions is going to be sending out your best pilots. And there's some decisions in there too, but it's kind of quick and easy at the beginning. Um, and then the mission starts. And then in missions, and that's where I feel like the agency is fairly light, in missions themselves, I feel like that's the place where the agency could have, I find myself wishing for more agency, let me put it that way. There, you always have the decision each turn as to whether you're going to continue your mission or your abort your mission, but that feels mostly obvious. I mean, there are times where you're going to get two planes shot down and you're like, what do I do, you know? But most of the time if a plane gets damaged, you're going to want to try to send it back because you don't want to lose the plane and they crash really quickly if they're damaged. So most of the time that decision is pretty easy. Um, the combat decision, I do feel like there is a consistent decision that gets asked of you when you run into an enemy squadron. Now sometimes you get jumped, right, and you don't have a decision. They're going to come and comment, they're going to have the initiative over you, and you're just going to get raked over the coals. Going back to that whole brutality of World War I aerial combat that this game kind of displays really, really well. Um, but the decision matrix that I do feel like you do have impact and is important to make is when to choose to engage in combat. You know, if you have the option to engage, do you engage with combat? And you, uh, you know, as much as you want to fight and have dogfights and things like that, I think to me it seems like the general strategic tip is unless you have an edge uh, or you really need the points and it's later on in your campaign, keep going, avoid that. You only really want to engage when you know you're going to have a strong numerical, mathematical edge to do well. Because otherwise you're flipping coins in this game, the math is just going to catch up to you and it's going to rip you apart. Um, so there, there is some agency there. And then at the individual attack level, you're going to have to decide whether this plane attacks or breaks off. And that's there too. But a lot of times, again, you know, after that first round, if you get jumped and your planes are getting shot down and you see your advantage, your disadvantage, you're like, yeah, I want to get out of here. If you see your advantage, you're going to be like, yeah, it makes sense to keep fighting kind of thing. So, you know, the, the, the sum of it all is that I feel like in many times in this game, I was wishing for more and more meaningful decisions, that it is a very light touch game. Now, having said all that, it's still really fun. So I think that what I would say for someone like this, if you're thinking about getting this game, um, there's a couple things to say. If you are looking for a high agency game, I think you're going to be disappointed. Absolutely without it. This game is light agency. You will be disappointed and you'll be looking like, I want to do more things. I want to make more meaningful decisions, right? Also, if you're a player who takes failure personally, <laughs> This game's going to really upset you because this game is just going to slam you down, right? Because you're going to have missions where you don't have control over something happens. Everything's going to get sideways. Your best pilots are going to get shot down and die. And you're going to be like, oh, really? What do I do now? If, if you can't take that, if that's going to make you mad, <laughs> this game isn't for you because stuff's going to happen and it's got nothing to do on your ability level as a player. Bad stuff is just going to happen. And you have to trust that overall the campaign's probably going to be maybe okay. So if that's going to bother you, bad luck ruining your campaign or kind of putting it, knocking it sideways, this game's going to make you angry, right? Um, but if you are, if you want to engage with the light agency game that's going to spin really cool narratives and have a kind of a gameplay system that just kind of generates such an arc and range of mission outcomes, and again, you do have some agency. I'm not saying there's no agency. You do have decisions to make, and those abort and kind of continue on decisions, those are meaningful and impactful. It's just that they happen somewhat sporadically and less that I would like to see. But 
you know, if you're looking for a light agency game, this is a kind, I think it's like a Friday night game after a long work week, right? So you've been to work, you know, you've worked like 40, 50 hours or something like that. You come back, you're tired, you want to break out kind of a beer and sit down and just relax playing a war game, but you don't want to go into something that's like level, like squad leader or something like super complex or something like that. You're just like, I want my brain to do something a little bit lighter. That's when you break this game out, and that's the situation in which you're going to have an absolutely awesome time playing this game. So it, you know, there, there is a place for games like this with light agency, and I think that's where you really want to just be aware of that if you're thinking about getting this game, and it's important to know that. And those are the major things I want to talk about. There are probably a few other little things to talk about, like things I like and stuff like that. I mentioned I like, I like the variety of missions. I really like that. I like the mission cards, too, with a little bit of historical flavor on them and things like that. That's really fun. I really like the combat system, too, and the initiative system. It's fun to execute, so it's fun to play and see what you get. Again, it's kind of like, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, you can have the same combat two times, and the first time you have it, you're all on the, the dark end of it, you know, you're gonna just get wiped out, and the next time you get good rolls and you got advantage, and it's really fun, and you rip the enemy apart. So again, it's kind of that random intermittent nature of rewards where it, you, you don't know what you're gonna get. It's pretty exciting because of that, you're like, okay, how's this gonna turn out? I don't know. I like the post-mission event cards. I know I mentioned that briefly, but after each mission, you have the option of pulling one of these cards and doing what's on that, or it happens to you. Mostly good, but there's some bad ones in here too, for sure. Um, and then there's a number of optional rules here, looks like about eight or so, that you can add to gameplay after you've played a few campaigns. And that's probably worth talking a little bit too about the the depth of the game, the replayability of the game. I don't think this is a game you're gonna play one, two, or even three campaigns and then say, I'm done with it. I feel like this is a game that you're gonna consistently kind of pull out and play. It's going to get played, right? Because there's a tremendous variety of missions. The story of your squadron and its pilots is really creative and really fun. It spawns such really, really good and rich narrative that it's almost like kind of sitting down and say, okay, I'm just gonna kind of play this out and let's see what happens again too. So I've played uh, two campaigns now and then the mission that we did on the, the show and both of them were really fun, both of them are really exciting, both of them are really good. I'm by far not done with the game. So I think, you know, there's a lot of gameplay in this. Combine that too with the fact that it's an easy game to set up and start playing. I think you're gonna really find it's a game that gets to the table quite a bit. Uh, the components, probably talk a little bit about the components. You know, it's a paper map and it works really well. It's well organized. The mission cards are good. The counters are good, nice and clear and legible and stuff like that. Components are fine. Artwork's good. It helps kind of draw you into the mood and things like that. I mean, it's not like, oh my God, these are the best components ever, but they're very functional. They're very clean. I like the artistic style and they work really well for executing the game. It is too, as you know, you know, you should know, it's a little bit charty. You're kind of bouncing back and forth between charts to find anything and rolling dice and stuff like that. And there's a good bit of dice rolling in the game too. Um, to kind of generate those events and things like that and kind of the outcomes of combat. So you're going to be rolling dice quite a bit. You want to be ready for that and looking stuff up on charts that kind of, and that's another kind of element of gameplay in these subgenres, and it's definitely in this one as well. Um, but I think that pretty much covers everything that I was hoping to talk about with this game. Final word, thumbs up, thumbs down. I, this is an enthusiastic thumbs up with the caveat that if I want to really think hard and challenge myself intellectually, this isn't the game I'm going to, right? So there is a light agency and I do, I find myself times wishing there were more agency in the game, but there are times in my life where this is exactly the game I'm looking for and I really appreciate how fast it is to game to play and the magnificent narratives and story arcs of your squadrons and your pilots that this game generates. So, you know, when I'm looking for a light game, I think this is one I will come back to quite often. It is fun to play. And combine that too with the masterful uh, reinforcement theory that's been kind of embedded into the outcome for missions and battles and stuff like that. It really gives it more so than I think almost any other tabletop war, gaming, I, war game I can think of. It has that, I'm just gonna play one more mission. You'll get there too. You'll be like, oh, I want to play one more mission. I should go to bed, but no, I want to play one more mission. I want to find out what happens, right? And so it really does a masterful job at enticing you into play. So it kind of continued playing and playing. It, it's a joy to play. It's really fun to play with that big caveat that, yes, it somewhat in many ways kind of takes you along for the ride and shows you the story of this campaign and of your squadron and things like that. And again, you do have choice. There are elements that you're going to be making decisions, but there are gonna be stretches where you're not, and some of the choices you make are gonna feel kind of obvious and light. 
All of that said, with, I think I've hopefully I've articulated how I feel about the game. Definitely enjoy the game, definitely fun. It's got a place on my shelf, and there are times when I really want to play this game, I'm going to keep playing it, but that agency element is a little bit light. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I'd be happy to take any thoughts or ideas and listen to your comments. Have you played the game? Do you like the game? Are you enjoying the game? Tell me the story of your squadron, too, because there's some amazing stories I've heard from other people already. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. I'll put a link up here to our first episode in our play mission, playthrough mission of this game, as well as a link to the unboxing of Skyhawk, another Legion War game in this subgenre of taking a plane on a campaign arc, this time in the Vietnam War with a jet bomber. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.